Hi, welcome to my channel Cloud with Girish. In the previous video workshop, I demonstrated how to secure your CloudFront distribution or website using AWS WEF. I also demonstrated in subsequent workshop as how to send custom response code and message using AWS WEF. If you have missed it, be sure to check out the tutorials. Link is in the description. The first link is how to secure your CloudFront distribution or website using AWS WEF. And the second link is how to send custom response code using AWS WEF. In this video, I will demonstrate another use case which focuses on implementing a rate limit rule using AWS WEF. I will add the AWS WEF along with this rate limit rule for a REST API endpoint exposed via AWS API Gateway. WEF will evaluate the rule and will allow or block the API request based on the rule. AWS WEF will return 403 forbidden status code if request is blocked after evaluating the rate limit rule. Let's look at our business use case. Business use case demands that uh, we need to implement a rate limit rule using AWS WEF. If rate limit rule is triggered, return 403 forbidden response. I will be creating the AWS WEF, Web ACL, and rules using AWS Console. However, you can create the AWS WEF rule using CloudFormation as well. Let's look at our architecture. We have a consumer which is invoking the API uh, using the API gateway. Uh, of, this is a contact API. Basically, it has a Lambda function and is getting the data from a DynamoDB and returning back to the consumer. We want to put a WEF in front of the API uh, endpoint so that there is a rate limit and, and we can control that how many times this API endpoint can be invoked. And if uh, a rate limit is triggered, then we will return a 403 forbidden uh, message to the consumer. Prereq for this is that uh, prior workshop uh, on AWS WEF uh, have been reviewed. Uh, the link is in the description. Two workshop, one was to demonstrate how to use WEF for CloudFront distribution. Another one is to customize the response code. Let's get started. We're going to review the AWS Web Service. We'll review the key resources to protect, set up the rule, look at the uh, associate uh, AWS resource, which in our use case is AWS API Gateway, and then we'll validate the solution by triggering the rate limit rule. At the end, we need to do a resource cleanup so that we don't uh, continue to incur the cost. Let's look at the AWS Web Service quickly. AWS Web is a fully managed web application firewall service provided by AWS. It simplifies the process of protecting your web resources by allowing you to define web ACLs, which is access control list, and custom rules, or by using pre-configured rules from the AWS marketplace. Once set up, AWS Web safeguards your web applications based on the a specified rule. The key component of AWS WEF is Web ACL, the rules, and the rule group. You can apply multiple rule. Uh, rule action can be allow, block, count, and others. Rule group is a collection of rules. Uh, we can build our own rule group, or we can pre buy the pre-built uh, rule group from Amazon Marketplace. It really depends on the use case, the benefit, and the pricing. So please assess it for use, use case. Uh, AWS WEF uh, support uh, these services like at the time of recording of this video workshop. So services supported are CloudFront, API Gateway, the load application load balancer, Cognito User Pool, AppSync, and App Runner. There are multiple use cases uh, that can be supported by AWS WEF. You can use AWS WEF uh, to protect from distributed denial of service attack. Uh, it only uh, protects it at uh, layer 7, the app layer. Uh, there is a, another service uh, that is uh, well suited for DDoS protection at layer 3, and that's AWS Shield Advance. Um, we can also use the WAF to implement geo restriction, where you can say, hey, my API or my resources should only be accessed from a 
us ip and 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 all others should be blocked so that can be implemented we can whitelist the ip uh, imp implement the ip restriction um we can do a rate limit which is what this use case is doing and of course we can do a sql uh, injection protection and and other use cases so let's configure our web acl and rule for our use case once we are in aws console and we are in aws web service let's click on create web acl that's the first step and and we can put it in front of the CloudFront distribution or we can uh, put integrate web with other resources so in this example i'm going to select the second option here the regional resources since that include the amazon api gateway for the rest api i'm going to create it in us east uh, region and i'm going to name it as a contact api rate limit acl this is the ACL, which is going to implement the rate limit for my uh, contact API endpoint. Next, we'll create the rule. Since I'm not buying a managed rule for this use case, I'm going to select the add my own rule and rule groups. And then in the next, um, I will specify and start building the rule here. Uh, so my rule name here is contact API rate limit rule. There are two types the regular rule and the rate based rule since i'm implementing a rate limit i'm going to select the rate based rule again to build a rule um, you can use visual editor to build it or you can use json to build um, for this session i'm going to use the visual editor so we'll continue to build a rule so in the next screen here i'm entering a rate limit so i'm going to say hey um i i want like you know my rate limit to be triggered if if it's uh, uh, after 10 request in the evaluation window of uh, one minute is what i'm gonna select until few months back um, the only option that aws used to provide is five minute uh, evaluation window but uh, since then like last few months um, aws has uh, enhanced it and provide us more options so now we can select one minute two minute five minute ten minutes so we, I'm going to select 10 request with a window of 60 second, like one minute. And I'm going to aggregate it uh, by the source IP address. Um, so, and once rule is triggered, I want to block the subsequent action. So that's why the action I'm selecting here is block. The, when you create the rule and rule group, pay attention to WCU. Uh, it's, typically like allocated for your account, uh, the maximum allowed are 5,000. Uh, WCU, which uh, stand for Web ACL Capacity Unit, it's a measurement unit for number of uh, WCU consumed. Uh, and, and the consumption depends on the complexity of rule configured. Like my rule here is a pretty simple, uh, I think the minimum, um, wcu consumed for a rate limit is two so right now it's telling me that i'm consuming two out of my 5000 allocated wcu for my account next let's select an action for scenario when request don't match any configure rule so i can block all or i can allow in this particular case uh, i'm selecting allow and then if i have multiple rule configured uh, i can have multiple rules and then like this screen i can select the priority of those rules uh, that which one should be triggered first second third and so on in the next few steps we'll configure the cloudwatch matrix and request sampling once this rule is configured we'll review the configuration in the final screen and we'll create the web acl and once we say hey go ahead and create this web acl looks good web acl will be created and it will be ready for use once we have the web acl the next step uh, really is to uh, integrate it uh, with the resource that we want to protect so in my use case here i want to protect the api endpoint so I'm going to associate this with the REST API in API Gateway. I already have the API in place, so I don't have to create it. But uh, that's API endpoint is what I want to integrate with it. Now that Web ACL is associated with API Gateway, uh, and I have selected the REST API, I need to validate if it's working per the use case or not. So 
multiple way i can invoke my api uh, i can use postman i can use bruno i can use any other uh, tool i can invoke it via my api uh, app but in this case since i want to create multiple invocation for the api endpoint to ensure that web rule is getting triggered i'm just going to use the command line um, curl because it's faster so i'm going to say hey um, put a, my request in a loop uh, until like 12 or 15 uh, request that invoked and and i will invoke it and as you can see in this example my initial request went through fine but then once that rule is evaluated i start to get the 403 forbidden message and that's exactly the use case that uh, we want to implement so that's basically demonstrate that web rule is working now one thing i want to point out is that it's web rule is not very precise so what i mean by that is that the rule that we define that hey the 10 request and after that all remaining requests should be blocked it may not trigger the rule precisely at 10 it could be like 10 12 14 and the reason for that is that aws web rule get uh, evaluated uh, um, i think every 30 seconds or so so there is a uh, potential where some additional request will go through but again like in a real world scenario where you're trying to protect the resources um for for a like a from the perspective that it doesn't like take your system down it does serve the purpose so eventually within few seconds the rule will be evaluated and it will be triggered and then it will start blocking the subsequent uh, request uh, with the 403 message or a custom message if uh, you choose to configure the web with a custom error code and custom message so once this is all done and 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 we have um, for the purpose of this workshop i do want to make sure that resources are clean up and the reason for that is that if you leave it uh, um, in your account you will continue to incur the charge so just make sure that once you have validated tested understand the concept and you are cleaning up the resources and to clean up so that we don't incur the charge we need to remove the association CloudFront or REST API or any other resource association, delete the rule, delete the web uh, ACL that we created. So with this workshop, we have successfully demonstrated how to implement a simple rate limit rule using AWS web. In the upcoming workshop, I will also demonstrate how to further refine this rule by adding a scope down statement. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm constantly working on new content covering various AWS topics. So please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the Cloud with Grease channel. Your support helps me continue creating valuable AWS tutorial and workshop. Stay tuned for more exciting content. Thanks for watching.